Hey, welcome back to Handmade Home. I'm Hester and today I'm going to show you around my workshed. As you can see, I'm in my DIY clothes, hair is up and I'm in my workshop. This is the place where I do all the bigger builds for the website and for my books. And I thought, baby, it's time I'll show you around. Last week I done a full walkthrough of the whole house and I showed you the outside of the workshop. I've never showed you the inside. So I think about it's time to actually show you where I make all my stuff. This is where I do all the woodwork, these are my paint, my tools are all in here, all the nails, screws, bolts, everything you need to do the bigger builds is here in the workshop. It's a really nice space, it's sort of a mix of an old granddad's workshop and my Instagram studio because the walls behind me are amazing. I love this really old brick and it photographs amazingly as you're going to see in the video later on. So yeah, it's a bit of a mix. It's old, it's got almost junk in it. I didn't really tidy for you, this is how it always looks. So I'm going to give you a real look of what my workshop looks like. Okay, let's start with a history lesson. <laughs> this is what it looks like when we bought the house. We knew there was a structure in the back, we couldn't really see because of all these messy bushes. When we finally got in, um, there was this cupboard on the left hand side, a really old kitchen cupboard. Quite a cool looking kitchen, but not really what I was looking for. But also had this amazing walls. And as you can see, the ivy was completely growing through the roof. And the roof, as it turned out, was asbestos. So we had that removed uh, first of all. Now you can see I also changed a bit of the rotten wood. I put a new siding on the outside where needed. And I also shiplap the inside of the shed, just for a bit of extra texture. Then the outside got a nice coat of dark grey paint, the inside I painted white. And I made a new door, the door is actually a tutorial on the website, just look for how to make a stable door. And then a new roof got put on, a nice metal roof, and this is the shed how it looks today. As you can see I still really need to do the guttering, but hey, there's a new project. So before and after! Wanna look inside? Come on, have a look. It's not the biggest workshop. I reckon it's five meters wide and maybe two and a half meters deep at a push, but hey, it's big enough for me. And as you can see, those really ugly red cupboards are gone and IKEA did a little makeover in the workshop and gave me all this beautiful storage. And everything I need is just here. I got a shelf. It's actually one of the old shelves I just painted white. It has all my paints on it, outdoor paints, interior paints, my chalk paints, my Valsford paint, my Annie Sloan. And it's such a lovely white space now, especially with the shiplap, as you can see, that I painted white. And all my projects are on here, all the paints actually I'm using at the moment, I put on a little shelf. And I got these metal cupboards for things I don't really want to have on show, like little things that fall over. and just perfectly hidden in these IKEA metal cupboards. Same goes for these little drawers. All the small pieces are in there, like the twine and the tester pots and all my security stuff. And like I said, these are the paints I'm actually working with at the moment, so they're really close and handy for me to grab. This little unit was actually left in the shed when we bought it, and I love it. I just painted it blue. It's perfect for small pieces. And I'm using an old kitchen towel holder for all my tapes. Then I have all my concrete bits here, they need to be put on the website. A bit more storage for stuff I don't want to see every day, like my glues. Otherwise they just fall over, so tucked away in this cupboard is perfect. Got all my recyclable cups here that still need to be put to use and made into uh, concrete molds. More storage and I love these drawers because they're just perfect for my small tools. And everything is labelled so I can find them very easily. So turn around and this is my workbench. It's actually an old table. It's got a table with a couple of legs on. As you can see here in the corner is my wood stash. All the timber waiting to be uh, upcycled and reused into new products. All the small pieces of timber I have in baskets underneath my workbench. It's all plywood and MDF and small pieces. So back to the worktop or barn door. Because why would you buy a new table or a new piece of wood when you still have a good door lying around? You should really upcycle guys, it's so much better and it's a really good space to work on. And on top I have a little bit more storage for all my power tools are here. And some tools I use on a really regular basis and a bit more storage. And a little clock is actually a project from one of my first books. It's a West Elm plate turned into a clock. But with my shed, even though it's beautiful and has all those nice brick walls, there's one problem. There is no power. I am completely off grid. And I had an electrician come round and ask if I could have any power put in, but he said it's nearly impossible. But there's one really good solution, and that is Ryobi OnePlus Power Tools. And I love these products. I use them all the time because they have batteries. And the batteries can be used for any product they make in a OnePlus range. 
So no need for dangerous extension leads or anything else. You just need these two batteries and they go in all the tools I have. They go in my drill, they go in the saw, they go in anything. When I'm done using one product, I just take it out, pop it in something else like this glue gun. And the batteries even go into lights and radios. And guys, this light might be my most favorite thing. Because the problem with having no power is I don't have any lights. So in the winter, when it gets dark at four o'clock, I just have to stop working. But now, as you see, this light is so powerful and you can hang it. And I can even fold it over to make it into a desk light so I can really see what I'm making. I love this light, guys. It's really is a lifesaver for my workshop. But yeah, if I'm done with it, fold it up again, take the battery out. And you can even use the same battery in their saw. So this is my miter saw and I use this all the time to make a nice and even straight cuts. You can angle the saw as well so you can do your miter corners. It just makes DIYing so much easier and quicker. Yeah, all you need is batteries. I have two batteries, one more powerful than the other. And before I start a project, I just click the battery to see if it needs any charging. And if any charging, for now I have to go inside the house and charge the battery. But I'm thinking maybe putting a solar panel on the roof so I can actually charge them inside the workshop as well. But that might be a project for another day. So yeah, this is my off the grid chat. It doesn't mean I can't use power tools because these with a battery makes everything so much easier. No need for extension leads or danger leads going to the garden when it rains. If you have no power in yet, it doesn't mean you can't use any power tools. Remember in the intro when I said I used the workshop as well to photograph in, it's my own little private photo studio. Have a look, this is the outside of the workshop for my book Making Concrete Pots, Balls and Platters. This is a light canopy, but I'm using the inside a lot for my Instagram and for my books. Because on the same book, this is a fruit ball shot against a beautiful brick wall and the same wall you see again in this geometric vase. And if you follow me on Instagram, you see this workshop a lot. Do you want a sneak peek of the new book? I know you want to, come have a look. You might have seen this already in the video because I have my tools hanging from it. But it's actually kitchen storage, shot against a beautiful brick wall and you see my worktop here. So now you know where I spend most of my time. I actually spent loads of time in here beginning of the year because I was working on the new book, Made at Salvage Food, that comes out next month. In the beginning of the year it was so cold and I don't have any heating in here so I just had to wrap up warm with like two coats and gloves and hats and woody socks and big boots just to keep me a little bit warm whilst making all the projects. But with the tools it's so much easier now, now I got the battery powered one because as long as I got that battery charged I can make anything I like. I don't have to bother with extension leads, be worried it's raining and even when it's getting dark now I just switch the light on with the battery and it's amazing. I could just keep working and building you guys more stuff. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and share it on your social media. I'll be back with a new video here on the Handmade Home Channel next week. Hope to see you then.